Welcome to Chillin' with Ice with me, Lori Fetrick, or most of you know me as Ice from the American Gladiators. Thank you for joining me on this podcast where we're going to dive in and go behind the scenes on the number one hit iconic show of the 90s. It's time to get up close and personal on what drove us to be gladiators, what challenges we faced, and how we overcame to reach all of our goals. I know in this first season, inquiring minds want to know, was there drama, fights, hookups? Are we all still friends? What did we do in our personal lives? And how are we staying in such good shape years later? Well, stay right here and let's get into Chillin' with Ice. Welcome back to Chillin' with Ice. How are you doing today, Jeff? You don't have a microphone, do you? Oh man, my engineer Jeff does not have a microphone today, but that's okay. Uh, we've got a really special guest today and I'm really excited about speaking with him. It's been a long time since we actually got a chance to, uh, to catch up here. A little bit about his background is, and I know everybody is going to know who this gentleman is. He started out with the New England Patriots. He went to the Browns, ended up with the Raiders, and we are going to be talking with Bob Gullick today. How are you, hon? I'm doing very well. How are you? Oh Chill my God. with ice. I love that. Thank you. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> I thought look, so. Look at the way you're sitting. You just look like you're chilling. I am. This is that's what it's all about. Is just you know getting back with some of my friends that I've had you know the the pleasure of knowing all these years, and I mean you are one of them. And I was I was talking the other day with a friend of mine, and it's like we started going back and reminiscing. I mean the first time I ever met you was at the Goofy Games in Disney, Disney oh, down in God, Florida, right. Disney World. Yeah. I mean, because you sent you sent me that picture of you hitting me on the head with a giant hammer. Yeah, inflatable hammer. I think it was inflatable because I don't remember leaving any, any marks on me. So <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that is that goes. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun down there. Oh, the Goofy Games were so amazing, and so that was actually I want to say probably my second to third year on Gladiators. And, you know, they started really trying to push us out there, doing personal appearances, get the, you know, get the show moving. And then so when they sent me to the Goofy Games, I was like, what's this all about? And they had these elaborate sets, you know, that were bigger than mm. life. And I remember you were there and probably some of the other Raiders were there. And you and I just hit it off. And we just started yep. laughing and having so much fun. Yeah. And that was the start was, of our friendship. You know, it was for those. Well, I mean, I don't think they do it anymore, but it was at uh, Disney World down in Florida, I believe. Right. Yes. Yes. OK. Yeah. So we're, it's, we're down there and there had to be 20 or 30 TV stations. And yeah. each TV station took one or two athletes, uh, an on air person. And they had to pick some, somebody had to win a contest to come in. So you had four people and basically we all competed against each other. And, and by the end of the day at about five o'clock, all the, all the TV stations were up on that hill <laughs> yes. trying, to get to, trying to do their, uh, their little, uh, their little on air stuff. That was more fun than goofy games. Oh my God. I, I remember. <laughs> and it started. And yeah, it started oh raining. God. I mean, it was yeah. oh, such a good time. I mean, we had yeah. a lot of good times. And then after that, I remember um, I actually signed with the same manager that you were with and a bunch of other Raiders, Randy Piskin. Randy Piskin, yep. Yeah. And then we, you and I, went to the opening here in Los Angeles, the very first CPK, California Pizza Kitchen. Oh I don't know God, if you remember no. that. Yeah. I and, just, I, I couldn't believe that the pizza could be that crunchy and I flat. I, exactly. I remember thinking, who puts barbecue sauce and chicken and onions on a pizza? <laughs> a, a white, a white pizza. I, I don't, I don't want a white pizza. <laughs> I want a, I want a big thing with lots of cheese and stuff. If I'm going to eat pizza, I'm not skimping. I, I remember thinking to myself at that point in time, going, I don't know, Bob, if this if this restaurant's really going to make it or not. <laughs> we, had to, we had to eat about five of them. Who do we know? Well, you know, we also we also were at a um, 
I think, well, I don't know if, well, it was Randy because remember Vladdy Divas. Yes. The Laker player. Yeah. He was, he worked with Randy too. And he had some kind of charity bowling thing. Yes. And I remember we that. There. Yeah. Oh my God. And, okay. So I'm going to share something with you about that bowling day. Okay. okay. And you're going to laugh a little bit because okay. it kind of, it kind of, it wraps all back around. I I remember that bowling because of the fact that it was <laughs> everybody's going to laugh at this but I remember I had just gotten my boobs done for the very first time and it's so funny and when when girls usually get their boobs done for the first time you're like you want to show everyone you're like look look what I just did <laughs> you know and I remember that everybody was like down in that bowling area right there and people were like okay what's different about you and I go look I got my boobs done you're like oh my god I want to see I'm like come here <laughs> like it was no big deal <laughs> I, and I didn't know what I was supposed to say. Hey, those, those are you did exactly right. Those are beautiful, Lori. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! We've had some good that times. Was, yeah, we had some really good times. Yes, we did. So yeah, and then um, I don't know. There were a lot of other things too we did, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. That was. I remember walking in the Randy's office and Howie Long was sitting there, and I was like, Oh my god, that's Howie Long. <laughs> you know, so let I me did, let's. I did, that, I did that in every huddle. Did I walked into the huddle and said, "Oh my God, it's Holly Long." No, you did not. Shut up. <laughs> he said, "Oh my God, it's Bob Bowling." Yep, yep, exactly. You know, he didn't do that either. So, <laughs> so let's go back to your football career just a little bit. And you're like, "What are we okay. going to talk about this morning?" But you know, people love to go back to the nostalgia days of you know back when it was fun and talking about the Raiders and. Now, when you started your football career, was there a certain particular football team you really wanted to play for? I, well, I, I think at first I didn't really, I didn't even, didn't even think about the fact that I would be able to make it into the pros. Uh, I, I grew up in Cleveland. So uh, if it ever came into my head, it obviously would have been here. But um, as I, I, I was just told somebody the other day, um, one of, when I was in, in high school, or no, excuse me, grade school. And after the game was over and I was all, I was in the back seat and mom and dad were driving me home and I'm just in the back going, oh, oh. And my mom goes, Bobby, can I get you some aspirin or something? And I said, no, mom, let me enjoy this for a while. <laughs> and, and she smacked my dad and <laughs> said, you did this to him. <laughs> You know, you gotta, you've got to embrace that. You know how it is oh, when you're yeah. working out or doing things. I mean, hell, you tackled better. Th you tackled on the on the gladiator, but more than better than three quarters of the guys on the team. You know, and that's don't tell them I said that though. Well, no, you said that way back when, and that has stuck with me ever since. I remember you saying, "Oh my God, you tackled better than some of the guys on the NFL," and I started laughing. <laughs> It was, I mean, the fact that, I mean, well, watch, if you watch football today, you see these guys just grabbing and trying to slap the ball away and get a fumble. And I don't know, I was always taught, and obviously you knew the way, just you knock them to the ground and then you decide what to do with them. <laughs> I was going to ask you that question, actually, is what do you see today watching football that is so different back when you played? Okay, for first of all, for the viewers, okay, let's talk about when you played. I'm not going to age you, Bob, but what the hell? We got to go there. Um, yeah, we, we already talked about your boobs, so you might as well go. <laughs> exactly. Um, you started, what I have on my notes here is you started with the Patriots back in 79. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 79 yeah. to like 81. I, and then you went to, yeah. the, you played with the Browns longer than anyone, it oh, sounds like. Yeah. Well, I had I had uh, got drafted by the Patriots coming out of Notre Dame, and uh, and and that was kind of the time where I started feeling like, hey, maybe I can do some pro thing. And my dad was very helpful, wanted to uh, make, I'll do anything to help you out and work you out and stuff. And then one day he just said, he said, and remember, I only get twenty five percent, and. Uh, <laughs> 
And of course, I at that point, I'm not thinking of anything going, of course, dad. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, he never asked for it. So hey, who I was, never did. Who was the coach back then? Who was the coach of the Patriots when you played? Patriots was um, if you a guy remember. named Ron, Ron Earhart. Okay. I was wondering when Belichick and, came in. No, no. Actually, um, he, he came into Cleveland like in 96. He coached there for about four years. And and nobody liked him. Players didn't like him. Media didn't like him. Fans didn't like him. Why not? And he was just, oh, well, he's basically what he is now. He's just, you know, this curmudgeon old, well, he was younger, but um, so nobody really got into it with him. And he obviously jumped around. And then it turned out that his, you know, his, that was his style. Okay. And he started winning football games and, that's it. So, but I played for the Patriots for, uh, I was going into the fourth season and I was a linebacker. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I, I kind of, I was a lot more like you were on, uh, you know, running around, making the tackle. So I had, um, going into the, they had, I was 23 years old, 24 years old. And they had just drafted a line, another linebacker that was 21 years old. And I, and I said, oh, my God, they're replacing me with a younger guy. <laughs> and, so, and so I'm I, I tell the coach, I said, listen, if, if you're going to get rid of me, you know, can you do it this week? So I have a chance to, I don't know, get picked up by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And after, after the game was over, he came up to me and he said uh, he said he walked into the locker room and I was sitting there with some of the other linebackers just shooting the breeze, talking about the game. He walks in and he's like scanning the, the locker room and he makes eye contact with me. And as soon as he makes eye contact with me, all the other, all my friends just well, were like cockroaches. They just like <laughs> took off. But they were like, they, were, they felt like they were going to get, uh, that was just being too close to me. They'd probably get up. <laughs> so it was, and then the, the guy took me, he took me upstairs and halfway up, I realized that he's he's sobbing and he had just come from college from a, 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 co a coaching job at college. And he said, I've never had to do this before. Wow. And I'm and, and I'm like, I'm thinking me either. Right. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot harder on my side. Yeah. I'm the one you still have a job and this is over. Yeah. So I ended up patting him on the back and saying, listen, it's going to be all right. I'll end up somewhere. It'll be great. <laughs> and, blah, blah, blah. and I just at the, walked outside and I'm realizing what the hell just happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you started consoling then, the coach that just cut you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So drove home the next day. The next day was uh, I got a call from the Browns and they said I was I actually drove to my parents house back in Cleveland. The Browns called me and they said, you know, how, how do you feel about playing nose tackle, defensive line? And I said, well, I'm kind of a linebacker. Mm -hmm. and they said, oh, oh, OK. And I said, do you think you could want to try some nose tackle? And I said, well, he goes, well, let me just say this, Bob. We own you now. Oh, shit. We we bought your rights. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you if you think you can play a nose tackle or not, you're no. playing it. <laughs> and of course, I'm I'm like, oh, my God, I've always wanted to. Uh, that's okay. just like my is my dream come true. Right. And uh, I was about at that point, I was about two hundred and thirty five pounds and they put me on the defensive line. Uh, my first my first game as a nose tackle was. When I was with the Browns, we had gone to we were in L.A. and we were playing the, the uh, Raiders for the the last preseason game. And I had to line up against Gene Upshaw and Dave Dobby. And I mean, these monster guys that yeah. just you know, had all the reputation. And I I was just flailing in there. In fact, m many of them said to me afterwards, you're like the dirtiest player we've ever played against. Really? <laughs> and I said, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's why. <laughs> I know. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, a Bengals center just came up to me. I, I had two sacks against uh, Kenny Anderson. And the center comes up and he goes, you're the dirtiest, 
that I've ever played against. Now, why did they, but why, what did you do that was such a dirty player? uh, I slapped him in the side of the head a lot. (laughs) That's awesome. Just, I I was whacking, you know, I, I wasn't very, I mean, now you watch guys now and they're very, they're very good at finding, you know, tapping the right place, grabbing the right place. I was just, you're just on doing your thing. So just doing my thing. And let's go back to that question then. So what do you see today in football that's so much different than when you played? Are they are, are they are they different style? Are they bigger babies? Are they <laughs> I mean, what do you see today compared to when you were playing back then? What do you think? I you answer that question. You, I asked you. Threw, you. You, threw, you threw out the bigger baby thing. You know, I don't think they're babies, but they've they've been raised a different way. Mm-hmm. They are. I, I was raised. My dad, when I was, my dad taught me how to play ball, and as I got older, he said, "Listen, he goes, if you if you're well enough to get up and to walk off the field, you should just stay in the field because you're well enough to play." Mm. And so I I tried to never come off. And I just realized that if I do, somebody else is going to come in and play my position and maybe he'll get to keep it. So oh. I I would be I'd be one of those guys that the the uh I you get take a good shot and I'd just be kind of bent over and and the coach would send out my backup and he'd start running out and I looked I looked up and my my backup coming out. I said Get the hell off of there. You get off the field. <laughs> so he turned and he started running back. And Marty, Marty Schottenheimer was our coach. He goes, get back out there. Go get going. And he started coming. He was just like stuck in the middle. Oh, that's but, funny. Yeah, they were gonna they were gonna run a play. So they he had to leave the field. But it was, you know, we you'll you'll understand this. You feel like a warrior. Mm-hmm. Because you're doing something that not many other people can do. Mm-mm. You're doing something that that um, I'm, I mean, in fact, somebody asked me yesterday about uh, the pain and the hurt. And I said, I said, think about think about going outside and falling down, even on the grass. Mm-hmm. And you get up and going, oh, my back is tight. And and we we were hit like nine times before we hit the ground. Yes. So, uh, but we got, you know, we got used to it. It was just kind of the way it was. And the idea of playing, the idea of uh, of playing with injuries kind of lent itself to that, you know, the, that brave heart kind of attitude. They just chopped off my arm, but I still got another arm. <laughs> yes. or, it's that's, a, that's, that's, or is that uh, Monty Python? What but, a um, but you're right. It's yeah. that, that competitive spirit that was, yeah. you know, in your belly. That's just like you just keep going no matter what. Yeah. You know, these and, guys, these guys are, are are raised differently in the sense that that they they know that they're supposed to come out often. Mm-hmm. They, they they rotate these guys through. They want to keep them fresh. They want to keep them uh, not worn out. Mm-hmm. And so they rotate the guys around as much as they can. And I don't know. I, I just I felt like I played better once my once I was in my in my my um, my second wind. And yeah, I was your just element. Like, yeah. And, and I just felt like when I started the game, I just felt like crap. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like driving a new car off the lot. Yeah. You know, being very careful and stuff. And you get home and you realize that you got stone chips all over the place and you go, screw it. And then you, you just start banging around. And, the, you know, that's kind of the way it was. But it was all about it was all about the the warrior side of things. And I know it was weird. It's but I, I you understand, right? But I don't, yeah, I don't think it's weird. I just think it's it's a different time. You're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. back then, I mean, I even you can watch the football games and you could see the difference in mm-hmm. then and now. I yep. mean, to me, I obviously, I, you know, I don't know much about football. I know enough. You know what I mean? Then I love the game. 
But yet, I mean, I can see definitely a difference in players. There's no doubt whatsoever. Well, also, and and one of the other things, too, is uh, when you're pass rushing, my dogs are scratching at the door. Oh, let them in. Let them in. How many dogs do you have? I've got two dogs. I've got a, 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 a furry French bulldog. Come here. Oh. oh my God, he's huge. He's so he's, cute. But he's, a, he's like a French bulldog, supposedly. Uh, DNA says he is. Yeah, French bulldog, they're, but but they're like, but he's got long hair. And yeah. I don't know. It almost looked like a Pekingese, but a bulldog. Yeah, yeah. And he's uh, evidently there. They're kind of rare, but yeah. somebody didn't want them, so we took them. Oh, that's and so then the other one is, the other one's Dakota is uh, we rescued a pit bull. Oh, nice! And he was he was ten months old, and when we got him home, uh, he we fed him, we did all the things, and he never really got very big. Mm-hmm. And I said we got to get a DNA test on this, so we took him in. And it turns out that mom was a an American Staffordshire Terrier, which is one of the pit bull breeds, mm-hmm. and dad was a Chihuahua. What? <laughs> That's hysterical. Dad was a Chihuahua, and my first thought was, what, did, did he have a trapeze? What the hell? How did he do I it mean, exactly? How did know. they do that? Uh, who At knows? first, I was thinking, I don't think we even had a, a party like that after a football game. But, <laughs> you know, that was that was something. Yeah. So he uh, uh, he's so we call him now. Uh, uh, what do we call it? Pit, a uh, pit wawa, a pit wawa, pit wawa oh, or, a, or a chia pit. A chia pit sounds cute like a name. So, yeah. Bob, let me ask you, was your when you we're going to go back to your football just a little bit and then we're going to. Yeah. I want to talk about your radio show a little bit, too. Um, okay. When you went to the Raiders, I'm going to ask you, what was your favorite team you actually played for? Raiders, New England, Browns? Well, I, I think when I mean, the Patriots I love because I, I, I got a job. Yeah. And um, I was playing pro ball. The Cleveland stint seven years there was was amazing because I grew up watching the Browns and and uh, I would I would drive to the game on Sunday morning and there'd be signs up on the bridges saying they knew I was coming by every every Sunday morning. You know, good luck, Bob. Kick the Steelers ass. And uh, and so I don't know. It was, it was neat. It felt like it felt like I was I was playing for my my home team, which I guess I was. But um when I got to the Raiders, there was a, there was a different feeling there in the sense that everybody wants to be silver and black mm-hmm. sometime or another. Mm-hmm. And there's and and there's more to there's more outfits to wear <laughs> okay. with silver and black than with the brown and orange. That's so true. It uh, so I you know it, 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 and plus it was a different kind of attitude. I mean we're we're talking about I mean not just. Not just the uh, not football, but everything else going down to the beach, you know, in Cleveland happy hour. Everybody heads inside and starts drinking and eating hors d'oeuvres and, <laughs> you know, little hot dogs. And uh, I come out there and uh, happy hour. People are heading down to the beach yep. and, you know, skating, biking, volleyball. And I said, this is this is way different. Yeah. A lot more. So, so then I got, you know, then after the game, after I got done playing, then I started doing some other stuff with TV and stuff. And it was, I don't know, it just was a lot of fun. So I spent about 15 years out there. So after, I mean, what took you out of football? Was it age? Was it injury? Was it you're just done? What took you out of football? Um, the, I, I think it was, well, I would have kept playing, but it was one of those things. My contract was up. And they were just like, you know, you played 14 years. I mean, that's a long time. And we're probably, you know, going to try some something else. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, I figured that it would be, uh, you know, maybe it would be a good time to to walk away. And it was 
it was hard. You know, you do something your whole life. I was just going to ask you that. How old, oh my God. how old were you when you retired? 35, maybe. Oh my 36. God, you're still so young. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do? I mean, what was your mindset, you know, that, okay, I've done this for 14 years. This is all I know. Yeah. Now what? I mean, did you, what was your first year like? after um, when you retired oh, uh, it, it almost immediately I, I went into and i think a lot of people have experienced this uh it's called depression yeah and <laughs> i know it well after the gladiators <laughs> oh my god i just sat there going do i look fatter <laughs> <laughs> look in the mirror and going i didn't work out yesterday or last year um, you know, it's just, it was hard to motivate for so many things. And it was, um, my whole life had been football and, and it wasn't just the, it wasn't just the challenge of playing football. It was the camaraderie. Was I mean, you, you guys had the same thing with the camaraderie yeah. and all that. And yeah, I still see your things going with, uh, with the other guys at your place. And yeah. And I keep thinking to myself, one of these days I'm going out to California and I'm going to go to one of those parties. <laughs> You do. I, 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 I get, get it. Invited. I get it, though. You go into a depression for a moment. Yeah. So how yeah. did you pull yourself out of that? What did you do? I started to just get distracted by other things. Um, I got into uh, some of the television. Mm -hmm. I started doing radio, first off, first off. And it was sports talk radio, which seemed like a normal progression. And so I did that for a while. And I think she did that for a number of years, uh, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. And but it wasn't it it wasn't physically demanding. It wasn't you know it didn't have the same satisfaction. I mean, you walked out and you felt the same as when you walked in. Yes. And um, it was so it was tough. Um, but it, it's all I had. Mm -hmm. And then I got then I started getting into television, and I started doing auditions for things and. Just because I was uh, evidently, evidently, I was, uh, I was kind of a ham. Howie Long, <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> Howie Long told me one time, Howie told a, a reporter one time, he said, you know, Golick would talk to the wall if it had a notepad on it. Yes, I remember that <laughs> <Probably>. about you. <laughs> yeah, they knew me. Well, you know, but I ended up, I, I met some guy. And uh, he goes, uh, hey, I want to talk to you about doing a show and uh, coming on a show. And I said, OK. And I, I knew the guy's name. I can't remember it now, but it was a show that Shelley Long from Cheers was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I went in there and I talked to the guy for a couple of hours and he was talking football and stuff. And I said, cool. And he said, uh, I said, so when can I come in and audition? He goes, oh, no, you got the job. So, so nice. I ended up uh, going, Hey, that's kind of cool. That was easy. And I did that. It was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was Shelly and, um, you know, a couple of people that I, I recognized. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I got uh, approached by coach. Oh, that's the right. The people over at coach. That was a great and, TV show. Oh my God. It was great. You know who it was? It was Bill Fogerbaki, mm -hmm. uh, Dauber. Yes, I was I was interviewing him at the Super Bowl and Super Bowl was in in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And when he finished, when we finished, he goes, hey, you know what? He goes, we got a script coming up. He goes, I think it'd be perfect for you. And he goes, I'll send it over to you. And I'm like, I, I, at that point, I was like, God, I feel like an actor. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. So so I ended up doing that. And that was a, just a riot. Yeah. And uh, in in doing that, I was thinking, well, maybe I can, maybe I can get a couple of two, three episodes out of it. But evidently, my character died of uh, cancer in uh, cancer induced by steroid use. So, I'm like, they had to make it dramatic. I know. Can I just have depression again? I mean, you're like, I know I that one. <laughs> yeah, I got that one down. And so I, so I, I ended up getting uh, a couple of auditions, and uh, at one time, me and this other guy, 
I forget his name now. It was a long time ago. And we were, we looked about the same. He was blonder than me, uh, but about the same build and stuff. And at one point, I'm trying out for, I'm trying out for Save by the Bell, the college years. Mm -hmm. And Robin Hood men in tights. Oh. And and so I had to I had to audition for Mel Brooks with the for the Robin Hood men in tights thing. And I was just I'm thinking, God, this is gonna be cool. But it turns out that my buddy had auditioned for the same thing. So he ended up getting the Robin Hood men in tights, which upset me because I think I was better in spandex. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. But I ended up getting the the Saved by the Bell and uh, the college use. And I said the only bad thing about that was it only lasted one one season. But it was it was cool. I, I mean, it was gonna... something so, it was so different from anything I'd done before that this was it was really very distracting for me. I was just going to say, so did that whet your appetite enough to kind of distract you from the depression of not playing football anymore and you were like, okay, this is it. I'm going to be the Hollywood acting star now. <laughs> this is my this is my second act and I'm going to go on and this is what I'm going to do for a living. Was that where you your sound, head was at? You sound, you sound just like the voice that was in my head. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I had the same voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that they, they see somebody doing a TV show and they go, oh, man, he's got to make, they're going to get all these jobs. And it, and it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, work you can, that way. No, Randy, Randy got me a, an audition for a show. He sent me over the sides. He goes, I'm telling you, he goes, you're, you're perfect for this. And so he sent the sides over. The description of the, char of the uh, character was a mid to late 30s NFL, ex-NFL player type like Bob Golick or Lyle Azaito. They literally had my name perfect in the description of the character. So what happened when you walked into the audition? The guy had no idea who I was <sighs> and and I didn't get the job. Unbelievable. And at that point, I started thinking, first off, I said, can I go back and do it like Lyle would done it? Uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, I want to be Lyle now. But it's. I don't know. At that point, I started realizing that a lot of these people don't know what the hell they're doing. Mm -mm. You know, the, some of the casting people don't know. They're just trying to get people in there. So at that point, I, I realized that, you know, the whole acting thing was going to be kind of hit and miss. Yeah, it's so. a, it's a very hit and miss industry. Um, it's kind of like when I got the episode Superman, I, I thought this is it. This is the one that's going to put me over the edge. I'm going to, you know, from here, I'm going to get other auditions and then that's going to open the door. And then yep. it's, it's cruise sailing from there. And you're absolutely right. It's like, eh, wah, wah. It doesn't why work that way. Calling? Why aren't they calling me? Yes. Why aren't they knocking so, down my door? I'm perfect for that vibe. I know. I was, I was saved by the bell. You were Superman. I mean, my God, it was, you should have had your own, your own hero. <laughs> You should have had your your own uh, I know. superhero. Why, why wasn't I uh, picked up by Marvel or DC or so? Yeah, you're right. It's so funny. Exactly. You know, and Gal, I used to. Gal Gadot. Oh, Gal Gadot. So what? Big deal. Wonder Woman. I yeah, I used to watch you these. Her ass. Dude, I I know. I used to watch these shows. Going, um, wait a minute. She's 120 oh. pounds. Um, there's absolutely no way that physically she could kick this guy's ass. You know, it's like, why can't I be playing these roles? And so I get exactly, exactly. I mean, yes, I'm yeah. your little voice. You're my little voice in the head. And that's so when you discovered, okay, this is maybe hit and miss. Is that when you kind of started going back into radio or what'd you do after that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually started going into, uh, NBC had talked to me about doing NFL games, and so during the week, I would do a, a radio show. And on the weekends, I would I, on a Friday, I would fly out to one of the games and uh, call the game, come back, do the radio show during the week. And, you know, next weekend, go to another game. So it was it, it was it was busy. Yeah, it was busy. It didn't have the same. It, it kept my mind off of things. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
you know, obviously it wasn't the same and it just was so hectic all the time. So I, I did NBC for about four years, maybe five years. And then I got a call from CNN. Uh, CNN at one point had had done a uh, combined with Sports Illustrated. So mm -hmm. they called it CNN SI. OK. And I went over to uh, them and they were having a, a pregame show. Kind of like what Howie and those guys do over at Fox. Right. And I said, oh, man, I'm going to kick their ass. I'm going to this is going to be great. And so I get over there to to first off. The guy that's hosting it is an old buddy of mine from Cleveland. So I'm there, right there. I'm thinking, OK, I didn't earn this. Um, my buddy got me a job. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and then, then the guy that I'm working with is the head coach that cut me from the Patriots. Oh. <laughs> OK. It's unbelievable. And for the, the first three weeks of the show, I just kept saying, Hey, do you feel good about cutting me that time? Did you feel <laughs> twice about it? Did you were messing with him hard, weren't you? <laughs> oh, big time, big time. So, uh, but I found out when we were there that CNN SI didn't have the rights to game footage oh. and things like that. So the only thing we had were guys running around in t-shirts at practice and nobody wants to see that. No, no, they want to see no. the game footage. Oh, they that's too bad. Footage. Yeah. So so we, I did two years there and then got into radio. I, I, I started getting, I don't want to say tired of, of sports radio because I, I, I like sports, but I started I started getting more interviews with people. Like, for instance, a, a player would beat his wife or something. <laughs> and I would... Bob, that oh, sounds no. terrible. <laughs> or a player's wife beats him, one of the two. Okay. And I, I know, it does sound bad. Yeah. And it put me in a whole different direction. No, I'm, you know. You're like, the drama or, behind the scenes is what I want. <laughs> exactly. Or, or drugs or something. And I would call somebody over at USC and uh, get one of their sociology professors and I do like a half hour, 45 minute interview on the psychology of of, you know, what the guy's going through being a football player and the 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 wife. And, you know, is she feeling, you know, all those things. And I started after those were done. I was just like I was geeked. I mean, I just thought it was the it just felt really good. Actually, that's kind of fascinating. So, yeah, it is. And so I started thinking. You know, if I get a, get a chance to do regular radio, I think I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So how long so have did, you been at your show right now? And tell my viewers where what show you're doing. What I am at, uh, I'm at a station, uh, WNIR, 100.1 FM on the, uh, and out of the Akron, Cleveland area. And uh, I, I, I actually got a call from my mom. She said, Bobby. There's a, an ad in the paper that says they're trying to they're looking for a new host for the afternoon and they're looking for auditions. And I said, Mom, I don't think they want me. You know, I think I'm, I'm a sports guy. And she goes, well, just come back here. And so I came back, did the audition. And when it was when I was done with it, the guy goes, OK, you got it. Nice. And it's just that was it. I just started getting into real life you know all the stuff you're not supposed to talk about yeah it's fun to talk about talk isn't about. it it's fun yeah how yeah. long you've been oh, there it's, it's, uh 18 years 19 years no way yeah 2005 i came here and it's not until it's not until recently that i've actually had uh death threats but um what for what? Over the, last couple, over the last couple of years. For what? For things that I say, or somebody will call up and argue with me, and, and then he'll go, he'll use bad language, and I'll have to beep him. And, he'll, <laughs> and, and while he's being beeped, he goes, he goes, I'm going to come down there and kill you. You know, somebody ought to kill you. I think I'll do it. Wow. And I've been, and nobody can hear us talking at this point. And I'm saying, you're too much of a coward, you pussy. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Come on. Come on down. Come on wow. down. We'll talk. We'll come down and we can talk about it. Uh-huh. And uh, and nobody ever, nobody ever showed up. But there was there was one day I heard a gunshot when I left the studio. And I kind of dropped down behind the car. Uh, we're a, a constitutional carry state. So mm-hmm. we can. I mean, I was pulling I was pulling stuff out of all my pockets, <laughs> pop, the, pop the trunk, <laughs> put the bipod up, fix the telescopic sight. <laughs> I was I was red, but I was ready. But I don't know. It, it, I don't know if it was somebody or not or they were just messing with me. But, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of fun just getting. I don't. You know, back in the day, I, I think I I think I spent too much time trying to be nice to everybody mm-hmm. and trying to be friends with everybody, mm-hmm. and which is fine. But as you get older, you realize that you know you can't do it. You can't please everybody. You can't. And and so you just you do the best you can, and if they don't like what you're doing, then they don't have you know, to listen to you. Them. Yeah. Yeah, turn off the radio, but turn they don't. Turn the station, exactly. <laughs> but they don't. They it just it. They some of these guys just like to be and girls, just like to be taunted. Mm-hmm. And so I do my best. We're to we're, talk we're in a very very strange kind of society now. You know, we're yeah, very strange. But we are. It is. Yeah, it's because I I when I first started, I was kind of a politically balanced. Um, type of show, mm-hmm. it, but it wasn't. It, but it was like I was very ass kissy to both sides, <laughs> and it, it it didn't um it didn't lend itself for excitement. So it didn't serve and you well. It didn't serve me well. No, it was getting boring. So where are you now? Should I say yes? Absolutely. I'm. I'm. Let's see. What's what's your right? <laughs> this is my right over here. <laughs> OK, that's it. I'm over there. Are you a, are you a far right or are you a in between the center and the right? Because some of the right far side right can be way yeah. too far side. Right. Oh, absolutely. I'm I'm the guy on the right who just wants to to have certain things done differently. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so. I, I'm that guy, but I, I also, there's far left people too, mm-hmm. who also uh, are always antagonizing. So mm-hmm. I just don't, I don't understand why they don't know what I'm, why they don't understand what I'm talking about. I just explained it to you, you idiot. <laughs> why don't you understand what I just said to you? And then they said somebody ought to come down there and kill you. <laughs> but, oh, um, that's where the death tre- the death threats are coming in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, now yeah, I get so it. I'm, I, I'm more center. Um, center. Well, center. Right. Most people. Most of the people say I'm right. Yeah. Right. But I'm. I'm not far right. I just think that I look and see what works, and if it's going to work and make things better, then. Like right now, nothing's working. No, and it's a it's a bad thing. I mean, anybody you talk to, it's a it's same thing. So absolutely, anyway, yeah. But uh, that's 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 it's really sad that you can't nowadays speak your mind without getting death threats. You know that. But then again, mm-hmm. I, I, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go back on that because I remember. <laughs> I don't know how many years ago it was, so many years ago, but I guess this has been going on for years. This is something that's really kind of not new. I guess it's new to me because I've never paid attention to politics, you know, growing up. I don't think anybody did until possibly COVID came around. Then all of a sudden it kind of like started, you know, coming up. But yeah, that's kind of sad that nobody can, you know, you just can't speak your mind nowadays, it seems like, you know, and it's like, oh, I can't say that. Oh, can't say that. Going to cancel this. When did you start getting starting noticing that that things were political? Um, COVID when COVID hit. COVID. Yeah, yeah, that was it. My sister. OK, so this was funny in our family. It was we always knew not to talk, not to bring up politics, especially around my sister, because my sister was the dive down deep into the rabbit hole. And when you would talk to her, she knew it all. And if you weren't spot on point on something, 
she would tell you. So in yes. our family, it was like, don't talk. Well, you know, usually it's don't talk about religion or politics, but my mom's extremely <laughs> religious. So we're screwed oh. all around. <laughs> you know? Oh, so much for Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, don't even talk about Thanksgiving. It's like I got my oh. mom over here, super religious. I got my sister over here, super political. And I'm just I just want to have a good time, you know, yeah. <laughs> I just know that as I got years ago when my daughter, my oldest, got married and they came out for Thanksgiving. It's the first time her husband had been out here and we sat down Thanksgiving and and somebody said, hey, how's the show going? And I said, oh, pretty good. And I made some comment about Trump or something. And and he just went off. Oh, yeah. There goes and your I'm whole like, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, so, you know, just had to deal with that. And I said, hey, you're not even and I, and I what I hate is, is that that people don't listen. They mm -hmm. don't listen to you. They just when people when they want to respond, they they essentially um, just wait till you're done talking. Mm -hmm. They're not listening to what you're saying. They're not trying to understand. I mean, I try to I try to have a semi intelligent thing i mean i go with facts i i look on you know all the all the different websites so uh, you know conservative the liberal and i try to have it all but when you start arguing with somebody if you don't if you're not doing what they're doing then they don't even hear you mm -hmm. and they they just want to wait for you to stop talking so they can yell but so, bob, bob isn't that i mean don't you find that kind of across the board in so many different areas though i mean it's not just oh, politics it's it's yeah. pretty much in general people's opinion nowadays it's like they don't really want to listen to what you may have to say you know mm -hmm. like you said they're waiting until you're done and sometimes yeah. they don't even wait till you're done <laughs> but yeah. i think it's it's sometimes across the board you know and yeah. i mean i've had many conversations about health wellness and fitness and and with that world i mean there's so many opinions and you know so many different things and and i'm right and you're wrong and that diet's right and you're doing it wrong it's been that way forever but in that respect i mean isn't Aren't there lots of ways to do things? There are. Aren't there lots of ways to? There's to not a one life? size fit all. Yeah, yeah. You know that's that's, um, that's what I'm saying, and I just. But still, I think people don't. I think people want to be right, mm -hmm. and so if you tell them they're wrong, first off, they're pissed at you. Yeah. And uh, and they want to be right, so they they won't listen to anything you say because. Well, I read this and and, you know, the same with, the, like I said, the, the health and fitness and all that. It was just a, you know, I want to be right. I'm doing I'm doing keto and we're doing this and I'm working with kettlebells and. I started working with kettlebells. You did. Does that make me? Does that make me a wuss? No, not at all. That just makes you a little bit more verse in how you're working out. Because that was going to be my next question a little bit, and that is, how are you? How 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 is your health, and how are you doing after all your entire football career? Because I know just the little bit of gladiators that I did. You know, yeah. I'm like I feel it. So. I mean, now that you're, you know, I'm I'm not saying you're getting older, but as we grow older in age. All right, so would, would you please just say, Bob, <laughs> you're getting older. Say it. Say it. No, we're all getting older. You're okay. still as handsome as you ever were. Come on. Come on. And you're more beautiful than you ever were. Uh, see, we could just sit here and compliment each other the rest of the time. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> how, but, do you, um, how are you faring? How is your body holding up? Uh, so far, so good. I mean, my knees are kill. I just kill. I mean, they hurt all the time, um, especially going downstairs, going yeah. up, not too bad going downstairs. I just, it's like somebody's driving a knife underneath my, uh, my, uh, kneecap and then you get to the bottom and it's like, oh crap, I forgot something. And you're about <laughs> to go back upstairs and you go, ah, screw it. I don't need it. <laughs> so you were playing you know. at 2.30. What are you at today? Um, well, I played as played linebacker at 2.35. When I went to the Browns, I went up from there. I went to 2.75 to 2.85. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. I had, 
I had I had gotten big time into into the weightlifting. I wasn't I wasn't a really good um, bench presser. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, three oh five, three fifteen was like my for a couple of a couple of reps was like my thing. Mm-hmm. But I was a squatter. I hit um, one day in the off season. We were all kind of maxing out, and uh, it was my turn on the squat machine and squats. It wasn't even a machine; it was just regular bar. And uh, we put on eight fifty. And I put on a I put on a bodysuit, wrapped my knees, and put on a belt, and took it off. And I had never seen a bar wobble yeah. before. I'm thinking this those things are like hard metal. What the hell? It bent. I know. Didn't it? it was bending. Exactly. Yeah. It bent. It freaked me out. And so I I went down and then boom back up again. And right about then, our head coach walked in. And called his uh, the training our training guy over, and he said, "If any of these guys can't play football because of what you're doing, he goes, you'll never work again." Uh. <laughs> and Redman is the guy; those are trainer. And he goes, uh, "Guys, high rep. We're <laughs> not going to go. We're not going to max out There's anymore. No more so. maxing out. I'm sure no that did max- your knees a, a big justice." Oh my God, eight fifty. Yeah, that's probably not probably. No, well, you know, there's a lot of people. If you watch the games, you see these guys, their knees getting landed on all yeah. the time, and um, they would do it intentionally back in the day. Now they're not allowed to. But how's your um, back and your neck? My back is not too bad. Okay. Once in a while, I, you know, I feel like uh, I'll have like a pain going down my leg. Yeah. Um, my neck is, my neck doesn't hurt Mm -hmm. so much as it, if I stay in one position too long, my hands go numb. Okay. Because it it pinches, it pinches the nerves. I guess I've got narrow channels, uh, with, with, um, calcium buildup where the, where the nerves come out of the, uh, the vertebrae. And so if I'm not the right way, it, pinches them off. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm hitting, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night, hitting myself going, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Cause you can't feel your hand doing it. So, um, but other than that, you know, it's been pretty good. Most of the guys I know have knee replacements, shoulder yeah. replacements, hip replacements. And I've, I don't know. I, I think it goes back to that. Um, I think it goes back to that warrior thing Oh yeah, where I felt like, Anytime we get together, uh, they say, oh, yeah, I just got my uh, shoulders done. I said, I still got my original. So it's like I the, still got the old the man group. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, what do you group. have replaced? Well, I got yeah, my I'll knee, my you. hip, my shoulder. Exactly. exactly. And I just say, and I just, I, it's like the, I don't know. I, I love the fact that I haven't had any of the, uh, any of the new ones put it on. I say, hey, what happens if. If God wants us to bring everything back, <laughs> they all looked at me and walked away and yeah. drank beer. Well, so. I think you look fabulous. And I just talking with you, you're still full of life. You still sound like you still have a shit ton more to do in your life, which is exciting. I mean, I know you have two kids. Uh, how old are they now? Um, well, I've got, I've got three, actually. My oldest is a stepdaughter. Okay. Uh, she's like 35. Okay. I've got a, another daughter is like 32. She just had a, my first grandson. Oh, congratulations. Which, which is just weird to I say. I bet. Yeah, it's, it's weird. And then, um, uh, my son is 25, 26 and, um, uh, he stopped over here. I, don't want to say it too loud, but when he was in high school, he was a big kid. Oh. And so they wanted him to play offensive line because it was, he was the biggest kid out there. Yeah. And he goes, dad, I don't want to play offensive line. He goes, those guys are big fat guys. <laughs> and I said, well, not all of them. Yeah. And so he tried and he tried. Ah, uh, I lost his, his audio. Um, letters from different colleges okay and it was that was pretty pretty cool yeah 
And then one day he pulls me aside and he goes, Dad, he loved playing baseball. And he said, Dad, I I don't really want to play football anymore. I mean, this is before senior year when he was going to do it all and win awards and get a scholarship mm. to college. And he goes, I want to I want to do baseball 12 months out of the year, you know, winter baseball, summer baseball. And I said and I tried to talk to him about it. I, I thought I was being nice or understanding, mm -hmm. but I don't think I was. The next morning when I saw him, I said, Gage, I said, go out back, go get the, the furniture in the pool. He goes, why is the furniture in the pool? I said, because I put it there. <laughs> I, after, after I talked to him, I took all the, the lawn furniture and just threw it all in the pool. Oh my God. And, is that your way of throwing I, a fit? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I told him, I said, you know what? He goes, and I can't guarantee that it won't be there again tomorrow. Aww, so <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> oh my God. Good parenting. So, he got over it, but I don't know. He would have been good at this stuff. I know. So what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing besides radio? Is that, is this it for you right now? Radio. God. What else do you want to do, Bob? Well, you know, I'm just trying to trying to stay active. Okay. Uh, I had a horse for a while. Okay. And then it just up and died at 30 years old. Damn that. They're, not even, supposed, that. they're not even supposed to last 30, 30 years, Bob. They're only supposed I, to last like 20, 21, if, yeah. if you're lucky. Yeah, so I guess I, I must have treated, treated him very well. You did good. You did good. But, uh, you know, so I go ride and stuff and take yeah. care and... And I've got some buddies out in uh, in uh, Vegas, and he's the my friend uh, Bert is a he's actually the guy that that uh, that brought the Raiders to Las Vegas. That was going to be my last question to you. What do you think, and how do you feel about the Raiders going to Vegas? I don't. I think that they're looking at it now and saying that it might be a mistake. Really? At the at the time, I just I didn't think I don't think there's enough Raider fans there. I mean, they're they're coming from Oakland, where the whole place is the black hole, mm -hmm. and and they're coming out here to a, a transient town where people from all over the country, all over the world, are here, and so when you when you when you play the game, if you're playing, for instance, early this season, I was out there for I think it was the forty the Raiders forty nine a pre a pre a season game, and I looked up in the stands and there was more red than there was uh -huh. than there was black and silver, so it I, I don't think they have the fan base that they had back then. I mean the Raider fans are still Raider fans, but yes. you know they're just not down. But it was the same thing in Los Angeles too. I mean, they just, we'd play the Steelers and half the guys, half the fans would be Steeler fans and half would be Raider fans. And and then the Raider fans would kick the Steeler fans' ass and we'd say, we win. <laughs> so it's all about competition. It is. It's so, so I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't see the same kind of, uh, the same kind of mystique. Mm-hmm. Uh, Al Davis, who was the owner when I when I was in, um, he loved that word mystique, and there was with with all the Kenny the Kenny Snake Stabler and just some some great things and stories and Lyle Alzado and and now it just seems like they're just another another team, a good team sometimes, a good a bad team sometimes, and mm -hmm. but I don't. They don't stand out. Remember, like for instance, the the old Steelers when they were back in the seventies with Mean Joe Green and, and Terry Bradshaw and Jack Lambert Some and all these guys. Names. I mean, that was yeah, that was yeah, those guys were knuckleheads, man. They were that was brutal. Yes, but I mean, they they established themselves as something besides just a uh, a team of football players. I think that's and, what's uh, missing today. What's that? I think that's what's missing today. In the football, yeah. in the football league, you know, there's, um, like you just said, all those, all those famous names. Um, it's just, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not there anymore. 
you know, and they're not building them anymore. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. maybe it's the rotation, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I don't know, but well, it, one of the things that one of the things that bothers me uh, about them is that I mean, every time somebody makes a play uh, or they make a sack or they catch a ball, they they jump up, and if there's anybody around them, they're basically fighting, pushing these guys out of the way so they could get out in the open. And so the camera can see them do their little dance. Yep. I was just thinking and, that. And, and I was thinking this is a team sport. I mean, this is, this isn't an individual sport. This mm-hmm. is a team sport. You should be celebrating together. Yeah. I mean, that that's what it should be like. And it just is, it's gotten past that. And that's... it's just, I, I don't think you can tell people to do that either. It's got to be some kind of, there's got to be some kind of belief that it, that it is. And they're just, it's just not there anymore. I know. I miss that. I know he, I was watching one of the games yesterday and, you know, they always try to protect these quarterbacks too from getting hit. Now with all the, all the pain and violence out on the field, there was one, one little bonus that I had that us guys had was that when you get a chance to block a quarterback, like an interception, you can just knock the crap out of them. Or if you hit them after he throws the ball and then you land on top of them. And uh, I remember uh, uh, Boomer Esiason hit him one time, landed on top of him. He made a little squeaky noise like a dog toy. <laughs> and uh, it was like, wow. I said, was that you? He goes, yeah, get off of me. <laughs> but now, you know, they wouldn't. There was a game. There was a game yesterday. The guy comes through and he's he's tripped up and he's tries to lunge and to get the quarterback and he hits him in the shins. Uh-huh. It's like, oh, you're oh, not yeah. allowed to hit these guys below the knees. I, I you know. can't hit them above the shoulders. You can't. If you if you tackle him, if you sack the quarterback, you can't land on top of him. You can't land with your too full many weight rules. On top. Too many rules. Yeah. I mean, they used to say, hey, give the quarterbacks dresses. And um, I think it's more that's more prevalent than than it was back then. Absolutely. I mean, this is, there's nothing you can do to quarterbacks. Nothing. Bob, yeah. I am so happy that you let me sit here and catch up with you and let my listeners know who you are and how we're friends and our backstory. And you are I love talking with you. I've always loved talking with you. We could sit and talk for hours. We've always done that. And who knew 35 years or so later that you would be here on my podcast. And I just really want to thank you for that. It's so cool. Well, my my pleasure. And uh, and one of these days I'll have a podcast too. You have a uh, radio I, show. <laughs> yeah, but I, I got a radio show. I mean, everybody's got a podcast, don't they? Yeah, well, nobody has. Much. I mean, look at your look at your podcast. I mean, this this the signs and the and the. I mean, it just looks amazing. Thank I you. I mean, what a setup. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Bob. Can keep in touch it? with me, man. I will. I, I will. We should talk more since we're good at it. Absolutely, <laughs> Bob. I mean, thank you so I, much. I, may want, I might want to get new boobs, so I'll call you. Hey, when and, you uh, want new boobs, let me know. I've got the doctor for you now. <laughs> Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. This is Lori Fetrick. You've been listening to Chillin' with Ice, and this is where legends live on. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcast. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' with Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chilling with Ice.